Hello everyone, I'm Cryptic Fox, and today we're looking at two small cell-powering oxygen machine designs for oxygen not included. The electrolyzer design I've commonly been using in my colonies looks something like this, but I wanted to use something that was a little smaller and more compact because this does have certain downsides. For example, the electrolyzers here will ultimately get overpressured on a fairly regular basis, so you're not really getting the maximum output of what you could be in the oxygen out of this system as well as uh, the hydrogen. Uh, the second thing is that this just takes a lot of power. We've got uh, we have so many pumps and things running. As you can see, I have to have a lot of batteries as backup in order to ensure that we continue to have power. That produces a lot of excess heat. Uh, it's just not necessarily the most efficient setup. So I wanted to come up with something that was a little bit more compact and a little bit more efficient. Uh, if you want to see what how this setup is designed and how to build it, I'll have a link in the description uh, below so that you can check that out if you want to go see that video. Um, but today we're going to look at two smaller, more compact designs that we can use for the system as well that I think in the long run will be more efficient. The designs we'll be building today I'll be doing in sandbox mode, but these can be built in a normal colony. This is just going to be for speed and expediency and setting all this up. Just know that when you're building with this with duplicates, that the order that you do things in is really important in order for the gases to sort themselves properly. Now this electrolyzer design is going to take advantage of the fact that gases naturally sort themselves into a sort of a hierarchy based on their density, and they won't share the same tile at the same time. Two gases can swap tiles, one moving one direction and one to the other uh, back and forth, but they'll generally want to sort themselves according to their particular density, with hydrogen being at the top, oxygen somewhere in the middle, chlorine below that, uh, and then CO2 below that. Um, there are other gases and stuff you can get in here, like sour gas and what have you, but we're not really too concerned about those at the moment, because they generally shouldn't be present in your colony anyway. These are the ones you'll probably most often run into inside the area where you have your duplicates actually living. So we want the oxygen and the hydrogen to sort, but we don't want to have to spend time and energy doing it, and we're going to set up a design that makes it so that the system automatically sorts those gases for us without us having to use a filter. If you're building this design in a real colony, you do have to build this in a particular way. So we're going to structure it at the bottom so that we have a basin that holds our electrolyzer and an area that we're going to contain fluids as well. The duplicates obviously can only reach so far, so we need to make sure that we're, you're building this in stages. When you get to this point and you have the electrolyzer in the bottom, you want to add in liquids that can create a layer that, that stop the electrolyzer from uh, having any gases contained in the lower area, and that will, that will handle the auto-sorting for us. But we don't want to flood the machine out. Because I'm using sandbox tools, I can just add these in using, uh, using the sandbox choices. However, the easiest way to do this with your duplicates is to use a bottle emptier. We're going to use two liquids. We're going to use salt water, and we only want a small quantity in the bottom here. So go with something maybe like a half a kilogram worth of, uh, of salt water located in the bottom. That will create this little layer at the, at the bottom area. Now, because of the way that the game treats gases and liquids that are contained in a particular area, even though this isn't filling up the full space in the bottom, everything in the game is based on tiles. So this little bit of liquid in the bottom edge actually occupies this full tile, even even though it doesn't display it as such. So there, there's no actual gases in it. You can see that if you take a look in here. Um, you've got the liquid at the bottom, and it's gray down here because it looks like a vacuum. On top of this liquid, we're going to put just plain water. And we only want maybe 100 kilograms or so of it. So that's going to create a second layer. And the two the two layers of liquid won't combine together. So we have a clear, a clean water layer on top and a salt layer of water underneath. And you can see that our electrolyzer isn't flooded, even though it's technically underwater. Above this, we'll put another insulated tile. That will force the liquid to adhere to the tile at the top because it, it does fill in this entire square, even though... It doesn't look like it. This tile here in the top left also has water in it in the in the bottom corner, making this entire tile occupied so gases can't exist there. So when we run the machine, it's going to naturally sort hydrogen and oxygen automatically into the two places it can put it. This tile here, or this tile over here where we have our airflow tile. Technically this could be empty, but I like to have the airflow tile in there just for aesthetics. The trouble is we don't know when we fire up the system which way it's going to sort the two gases. It has to put one in each of the two different sides because it can't have the same gas occupy the same tile. But it would also prefer to send the hydrogen and the oxygen to where it already exists. So ideally we want the oxygen to go out the side and feed our colony and we want the hydrogen to move into the upper area where we're going to build a second chamber to contain that hydrogen, capture it, and make use of it to power our system as a self-powering oxygen machine. In, the, in this top chamber you kind of want to prime the pump. So we're going to put a gas pump in here. Uh, and we're going to use this to try to, to vacuum out some of the gases that are in the in the top chamber. Now, because this is actually occupied, we can create a vacuum in the top area. Once we've cleared a good amount of the oxygen out, we need to prime this area with hydrogen. And that will force the system to actually push hydrogen when it's running into the top chamber. 
Now, in order to do that, ideally you should build this ahead of time before you create the vacuum, but you'll create a gas pipe in here, uh, just flow it into the inside of this chamber, use it under the gas vent, and pump hydrogen from some other source. You can either have it either contained in a gas storage container, or maybe coming from another electrolyzer setup you might have, but you need to put some hydrogen in here so that the system will default to sending hydrogen to the top chamber and oxygen out the side. You're of course gonna need a source of water in order to feed your electrolyzer. So we're gonna add a little bit of plumbing in here from a little basin I just created for this example. Uh, so we'll plug that in. Now this system, once it starts running and is producing power, it does have enough power to run the, 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 the liquid pump that's gonna provide the water, the electrolyzer that's gonna provide the gases, and the gas pump that is needed to extract the hydrogen and use that to feed into our, into our hydrogen generator. Uh, we do not want this pump to run all the time. So it's important while you're building this also to add an Atmos sensor in here. Uh, with a, a connection up to this gas pump. And we're gonna say that we only want this to, to turn on if the gas pressure is above, say, uh, 500 grams, for example, in, the, in each of the tiles. That way, the pump won't run all the time, but it will extract enough hydrogen to keep it flowing and powering our system. Now, we do need, uh, we do need a way to power this. Uh, so we're going to set on the left, or on the one side over here, we're gonna build a spot for our hydrogen generator and stick that over here. Uh, and this will also need a battery as well, so that um, excess power that's being produced by the system can be stored in order in case there are any gaps in uh, in the the, uh, the draw of hydrogen. And we'll set that just over here. This only requires a single battery to run this setup. It doesn't require multiple batteries like the uh, the original one that I showed you. Um, so this does have a few different advantages because it's a, it's a much more compact system. Uh, this small system, of course draws less power, which then of course requires less power, uh, produces less heat. It's just a it's more efficient all around. Um, and then we're gonna take this uh, this hydrogen and we'll pump it into our uh, into our hydrogen generator over here. Once we get it all set up, it's ready to run. Uh, you can see oxygen is the only gas that's coming out of the side port here. The hydrogen is naturally sorting into the top chamber up above. Our pump is gonna periodically turn on to grab the hydrogen and send it to the generator, which will produce the power that will power up our battery. Once our battery is fully charged up, uh, it's pretty much there now. We can actually disconnect this from the system, uh, and it will run completely under its own power from this point forward. The generator turns on often enough to keep feeding the battery and keep feeding the system, and you have a relatively small, compact setup. The one catch with this is the gas that is coming out of here for the oxygen is very hot. You can see that the temperatures up here are pretty scorching. If you want to solve for that, you have two options. You can either build this in an area where it's cold, so if you have a cold biome next to your your starting colony or your base area so that you have a cold spot to build it. Uh, it does have to be cold enough to offset the temperatures that are coming out of this system. Uh, as you can see, the oxygen coming out of here is like 64 degrees hot, so that's, uh, that's pretty pretty spicy. Your duplicates aren't going to like that, particularly if they're farming. Um, so the other option is to cool the air as it comes out of the system. So right now, we actually have the, the liquid pumping in through an insulated pipe just directly into our electrolyzer. But if you're not in a cold area and you need to cool it, um, you can set up a radiant system in front that will help uh, help accomplish that for you. To do this, you just want to use some radiant liquid pipes and uh, create a grid basically in front of the, the port where the oxygen is coming out. And the temperature of the water that's flowing through your pipes will naturally cool the oxygen that comes out of the system. Um, so you'll get a little, bit of, a little bit of a cooling effect. It is important, obviously, that your liquid is in a temperature range that's going to be acceptable. Um, in here I'm using water that's 27 degrees Celsius, so you want it to be low enough that it's not going to affect whatever crops you might be trying to grow. Uh, but with this radiant system in place, you'll see that the, the temperatures have already started to normalize a bit. As the oxygen comes out, it passes this radiant system, which picks up the heat, passes it into the electrolyzer, effectively helping to destroy that heat for us. Uh, and it will normalize the temperature of the gases that are coming out of here, so you won't overheat your colony. As long as you have an incoming supply of water, this system will run indefinitely. You won't need to make uh, any additional input of power. Um, it runs as a, with 100% uptime because this electrolyzer is technically sitting in a vacuum. Even though it's in a liquid, it's technically in a vacuum from the way the game sees it. And so it will never overpressurize, it will run constantly. You probably run a greater risk if you don't have enough duplicates of overpressurizing and giving your, your, your duplicates pop your drums running this setup. But you never have to worry about having to provide anything else to it. You can just let it run infinitely on its own. Because this system isn't using gas pumps to pump the oxygen out to the rest of your colony, the one thing you really have to be careful of is the presence of CO2. If any CO2 moves into this little area in here, uh, it will interrupt the separation process of the system and you won't get a clean separation of hydrogen and oxygen. So it's, it's important to make sure that you're only building this in a place where you already have some oxygen. 
before where you can prevent the hydrogen from getting in there. Otherwise, you're better to use a closed system that will keep the uh, the oxygen and hydrogen separate internally within the, the pumping system, like that first design I showed, and not you going with a system like this. This second electrolyzer setup uses many of the same principles as the first one, but it's a bit of a smaller compact design, so you could use it and take up smaller space. Uh, it also is a little bit more late game in that it requires plastics in order for this to work properly. But we're just starting the design in, in the same basic way. We need a place to put the electrolyzer, so we'll place that here first. Uh, and then we're going to use water to sort out the gases in the same way we did in the first system. However, this one is going to have a slightly different design to it. Uh, we're using three towels wide at the bottom here, so we have an extra gap on this side. Uh, we'll need to place water uh, of different types in the bottom of uh, this area to flood out the electrolyzer in the same way we did previously without actually flooding it. But the build order for this one is pretty important. So we're going to start first with uh, with salt water. We're going to use, again, half a kilogram and place that in the bottom. That will give us a coating on the bottom that basically occupies this bottom row of tiles. We don't want to put the next set of, of uh, liquids in just yet. Now we need to build a layer on top that's going to contain uh, the space in the bottom and allow the water to adhere to the upper surface. But we want to trap a small pocket of gas in this little back corner here. Uh, that needs to be hydrogen so that when the, the electrolyzer is producing its gases, it'll sort the oxygen up and the hydrogen into that little pocket in the corner. But the easiest way to do that will to be to run a system in using ventilation uh, and place a gas vent in here and start pumping hydrogen through it. And then only once the hydrogen starts to flow through this, uh, this upper area, then you'll want to add the second layer of water in. It will adhere to this tile in the corner, trapping the, the hydrogen in the corner. Um, now, because I'm using sandbox, I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to do this using the sandbox tools because it's a little bit quicker. Uh, but if we go to the hydrogen gas, um, let's just say we're going to have uh, I don't know, like a, a half a kilogram of of hydrogen will trap here in the corner. Um, so as you can see now, we've got at the bottom there's the liquid vacuum effectively and the hydrogen in the corner. So doing this with duplicates again. You're going to create uh, your ventilation system in with a little gas vent in this corner, start pumping in the hydrogen, and then you're going to have a duplicate use a bottle emptier to empty clean water on top of the salt water, and it will adhere to this corner, just like this. Now, because the gas, uh, the gases and liquids can't occupy the same space, as soon as this drops in, it creates a little corner area where you've got that hydrogen trapped behind the water. Now when our electrolyzer is running, this is going to be the place that the electrolyzer will place all the future hydrogen and all the oxygen will come out of the top. We don't want CO2 dropping into this top area, similar to the other systems, so we'll put a little section at the top here to block it off. And I like to use an airflow tile, though you really don't need to. There's not really any specific need to have that tile there at, at, at any rate. So we have oxygen coming out of the top and hydrogen into this corner. Um, when you're building this with duplicates, um, you can leave this top part off until you're finished all the construction. But uh, in order to remove the hydrogen, we're going to need a gas pump here in this little corner. But it's a very small space, so the only gas pump that actually fits in is the mini gas pump. And we'll place that right here in this corner. The mini gas pump is not going to remove as much hydrogen as this system can produce. But it will pull out enough that it can actually run our hydrogen generator and keep the system powered, even though it doesn't, uh, it doesn't extract all the hydrogen. Um, so up on the top portion here, we're going to then place our hydrogen generator. Um, this all needs to be connected in through power, of course, uh, into here and into there. Uh, we are going to need a flow of water, same as, same as what we had for the other system. Again, this is, uh, this is hot oxygen coming out, so we're going to want to use um, some radiant piping in order to create uh, a cooling radiator in front of this before we feed it into the system. Really, the easiest setup here is if you can actually build this in a cold biome. They don't have to worry about the uh, the radiant piping at all. But um, uh, in the starting asteroid, unless you're on uh, using the DLC content and you're in the the new uh, swampy asteroid area, there aren't any cold biomes that are close by. So you'll probably end up having to use a system like this one. Again, this system will have enough power production in order to support um, the pump as well. And up above here, we're also going to place... A uh, single battery so that we have uh, some some power build up. I have found in general that when this is running, it actually runs at a consistent enough rate that you almost don't need a battery. But um, I think it's important to have it for uh, for redundancy. And that's it. That's our simple system. Uh, there's no room in here for a sensor, but um, because the, the mini gas pump can only move so much gas at a time, you'll never really uh, vacuum out this whole space. The hydrogen will continue to build up, so you do have to be a little bit cautious of that. Uh, in that if this water seal here ever breaks and the hydrogen gets out, you're going to have some uh, pretty high pressure hydrogen coming out of this system. So it's maybe not uh, an ideal setup, but you can't make this this section here any bigger or it won't keep the requisite uh, little pocket of gases trapped back there in order to make it work. 
Our mini gas pump, of course, needs to be connected into the hydrogen generator, and it's all ready to run. Fire it up, we'll get some water flow coming in here, and you can see now the oxygen coming out of this opening, the little bit of hydrogen that's being produced coming into this pocket here, uh, which is then being taken automatically by the uh, the small uh, the small gas pump, and that's moving it up into the, uh, into the generator. If we look at our gas overlay, you can see that the hydrogen here is gradually climbing. Uh, it will continue to build. Um, as from what I've seen, it can be an infinite amount of gas trapped back there. It uh, it will just get higher and higher in pressure, even though we're constantly pumping it out. So there is, a, as I said, a certain amount of risk there. If the liquid does happen to drop here, you could have a blowout and find yourself with uh, some really high pressure hydrogen moving out into your colony. But this is the smallest hydrogen setup I've been able to build. Um, that is uh, fully self-contained as a self-powering oxygen machine. Uh, if we dis dis disconnect the wire here, it can now run solely on its own power. Um, this does, as you can see, run pretty constantly. The meter never really fills up, but it does produce a pretty steady flow of power. Same as the other system, if you do get CO2 in here for any reason, it will disrupt this water wall, and then you'll have a major blowout. So you cannot build this system uh, below the level of your CO2 in your base. Uh, you do want to be cautious of that. And if you run out of water, um, this will obviously stop producing gas. There should be a significant buildup of, of hydrogen in here, so you'll have plenty of time to go get it fixed. Uh, but if your oxygen level drops precipitously and end up with uh, CO2 drifting into the opening, eh, you're going to have a problem. So it, it's not without its flaws. Again, this fully self-contained option that I, I've normally been using in bases is probably more fail-proof in that um, it only requires a constant incoming flow of water. Um, in order to make sure that uh, you keep producing oxygen, but it doesn't have these sort of catastrophic failure scenarios that you can have with this type of a setup. But it is pretty cool to be able to make something super small. This is not the only solution. There are more than one. Uh, there is more than one way to oxygenate your colony, and this uh, certainly is not the one you're always going to want to use. But I thought it was pretty cool that you can make one this small and have it fully self-powered and infinitely running. Thanks everyone for checking out the video. If you want to see any more tutorials in the game, click on the link that's in the description and check out the other tutorials for Oxygen Not Included. Um, some of them are a bit outdated, but some many of the principles still apply to the, uh, the current setup of the game. Hope everyone finds this useful. I'm as always Cryptic Fox. I'll see all of you next time.